Can you give it up for Jesus? We love you, Lord. What a blessing. You guys, today, are you already feeling full? And yet God has so much more. You better create hunger. You know, many, many years ago, before you sit down, I, was at, I, I got into the university. And I remember going for fellowship the first night. And I walked in, just asking God to guide me. We're at the university. I don't know people. You know, I've heard bad stories about how good people go to university loving God and they flip. And when they flip, they flip badly. And so I'm like, God, please, let it not be my story. So I walk into the fellowship, main CU, and I found them singing this song. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm happy. <laughs> Let's sing it. He that dwells. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high. Someone, this is your word. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwells, just sing it. He that dwells in the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the most That's you. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Oh, he that dwells, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's my refuge and strength. Say, He is my refuge and strength, my fortress and my tower. He shall deliver me from the noise and pestilence. He shall come. With his wings and be my shield and buckler, I will not be afraid by day or night. Sing that again. If you don't know the song, just I, just like me, receive Psalm 91 put to music. He shall deliver me from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with his wings. Oh, and be my shield and buckler. I will not be afraid by day or oh, night. Come on. He shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in my bed all of my days they shall uphold me I will not dash my feet upon a rock cause I will dwell shall give his angels he shall give his angels charge over you oh yes he will to keep me in my ways all of my days they shall uphold me I will not dash my feet upon a road cause I Shelter of the most 
that will be your dwelling place this year. Oh, in the shelter. In the shelter of the most high. There's no weeping, no crying, no sorrow, no pain there. In the shelter of the most high. In the shelter of the most high. The shelter of the most high I will dwell, I will dwell, I will dwell in the shelter of the most high and Lord I want to be where you Why don't you tell him? Where there'll be no weeping, no crying, no sorrow, no pain. Lord, I want to teach me, teach me, Holy Spirit. Dwelling in your presence, Jesus. Lord, I want to be where there'll be no weeping, no crying. From your heart to heaven, say, Lord, I want to be. I want to learn to dwell in your presence, Jesus. Lord, I want to be where you are, where there'll be no weeping. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord. Lord, I want to be where you are. Oh, teach me, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Lord, I want to be where you are. Where there'll be no weeping, no crying, no sorrow, no, no pain. And you are my greatest desire, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. There Why don't you lean in for a moment? Some of you just sing it by faith. You're my greatest desire. That will be my testimony this year. More than anything, more than anything, Lord. Shut the world away. Tell him you are my greatest desire. Oh. You are my more than more than anything. Jesus. More than anything, Lord. Jesus. You satisfy, you satisfy, Lord. Oh. There is no one that compares. To your glory. One more time from my heart to the heavens. Oh, oh, oh. oh you are my greatest, my greatest. Come on, lift up your voice and worship him. New grace to worship. New grace to pray. New grace to desire him. 
Makatara mandele kelebo siprata. Open your mouth and release a voice in the spirit. Kopra tayaka neke zetelebo. Prana lalabo sitara mandelebo. We are here to meet with him. We are here to encounter him. Makaribo sibro to romandia lalabo se. One moment with him changes everything. Mota katara bazebro no no baziba. Eh kaya lalalalabo. Burdens are lifted in his presence. Motara lalabo sitara mande. Destinies are realigned in his presence. Mori kariba la ba 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 ba. Ekelelelelelelelelebozi. Motelelelelele kaya la 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 bozi. Okay la 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 bozi. Oh brother la 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 bozi. Telelelelelelebozi. Ah kaya la 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 bozi. Te ma 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 ma. Oh kaya lelelelebozi ta. It's you I desire More than anything More than money, more than promotion You are my portion Come on, give him praise in the house I said give him praise to the only one who is worthy, to the only one who is able, to the only one who is able to turn your story around. Rejoice in his presence. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Shout unto God. Praise him. Worship him. He alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we give God Nyongeza one more shout of praise? Woo! This is a spiritual gathering. You guys are also played when we were singing. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, I found this scripture and it, I got revelation about it. Are they putting it up or they want me to just say it? I just say it. Eh? Okay. Matthew 9, 36. Hey, the, the media team, any, any time now. It's there. Eh? Shh, I told you. Read with me. What does it say? But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep. Do you know that the state, the, the characteristics of sheep without a shepherd? It's there. Put the scripture back. Put the scripture back. What are the two major characteristics of sheep without a shepherd? Being weary is being extremely exhausted beyond just physical tiredness. Has anyone ever been weary? Being scattered, eh? confused, moving in different directions, can't hold on to anything for long, can't remember much. You know, weary and scattered. You can be educated and weary and scattered. You can have money and you're weary and scattered. In those multitudes were wealthy people, poor people, married, unmarried, uh, broken, or uh, coming from strong families. Uh, what are the other things? Lonely, not things that we think we consider to be things that may strengthen us. When Jesus looked at them, his heart was moved with compassion because they had the, the two major characteristics of sheep without a shepherd. In other words, to have a shepherd is a great thing. To have a shepherd is to be delivered from weariness and scatteredness. When Jesus sees his people and they're in that state, his one solution, put a shepherd over them. 
Let me show you the opposite in, in Jeremiah 23, 4. Jesus, God shows up and says, and I will set up shepherds over them. Who will do what? Who will feed them? Not with knowledge and understanding. He just says who will feed them. And what will happen when they are fed? They shall feed. Remember, Apostle told us about the word shall. It's established, not they will. This is an established thing for those who have a shepherd over them. Who is feeding them. They, like you. They shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking. Worship harvest. God has loved us and set shepherds over us. I want you this morning to thank God for our shepherds because we fear no more. We are not scattered. We are not lacking. We have an advantage in having Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari, our shepherds over us. We thank God for you, our advantage in the Lord, our sign of God's compassion over us. One more time, can you thank Jesus for excellent shepherds in Abmo and Pastor Ari. Apostle, we thank God for you. We thank God for you. May you be seated. Today, I, you pray for me because as I was hearing Apostle teaching, then Papa Blesso came. I'm, now what are we going to do? But the Lord is good. <laughs> um, it's interesting that I'm continuing from where Papa Blesso stopped. Seriously, you're going to see. You see, Papa Blesso came and introduced us to two powerful truths about submitting ourselves to a shepherd and submitting ourselves to the Lord. Basically. That that's what then when Jesus, when that happened to Jesus, he came from being hidden to being manifested. He had purpose. God had called him. God had spoken concerning him. He even knew the entire scriptures. He could argue with the doctors and Pharisees and whatever. But he was hidden. And for many of us, that's the issue. We are hidden because we have not submitted ourselves to another you know, submission is you actually have it. If it's not, if you don't do it willingly, it's not submission. You have to come and place yourself under. The Bible talks about who is it who says that he sub, it was Jesus, he subjected himself to them, to his parents. You subject yourself to another. You let them lead you where you don't want to go, ask you to do things you don't want to do. You know, you become another man. But it's interesting that after that encounter at the baptism, Jesus still was not fully manifest in his ministry. Because the purpose of submitting himself to God and to shepherds was that he had to change into another man to be able to carry his assignment. He had to change into another man. Man, you know what changes you into another man? Submitting to God and to shepherds. Because a shepherd makes you become a thing you never dreamt of being. Yes, he makes you lie down in green pastures. He makes you oh, sit behind, beside the still waters. It's a shepherd. They make you start a missional community. When you saw, you will never serve in church. They make you give tithe. They make you give to arise and build. They even make you change the amount of money you pledged. And it's in the assignment that you rise. No, sometimes you're not willing. That's the thing with a shepherd, is that sometimes you become willing along the way. Because many of us are deceived that you have to feel willing. When you have a parent, they make you eat sometimes when you don't want to eat. They make you sleep at the time you don't want to sleep. Then one day when you grow up, you start doing it to your children. Because you've now, you see, we're talking, I was telling Pastor Ari that the Bible says that it's the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. Fear. You begin, God starts to give you wisdom by fearing someone. You do things not because you want to, but because they will kill me. There are many things we've done because, ha, huh, what will, apostle will kill us. We can't put that amount of money, he'll come for us. We can't, honestly, not because God spoke to us. But you see, that's the beginning of wisdom. As you do the stuff, wisdom comes then actually you grow in wisdom and then you start to do stuff because you know it is the right thing to do but the beginning of wisdom is to fear god and to fear someone if you have no one to fear wisdom is far from you honestly if there is no one who you say if they report me i remember when we were in india and 
and I was supposed to have an operation and I refused. I told Pastor Jeremy, we came here, you were the patient, I was the attendant, I'm not getting it. And the doctor had said that what he saw was very dangerous because I was doing a routine check. I refused. Then he told me, I'm going to call Apostle. I told him, okay, 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 I'll do it. <laughs> there has to be someone you fear. And you know what? That saved my life because when, the in, when those doctors in India went into my tummy, they said that what they found, maximum I had was 48 hours. It was going to burst, spread poison into my body, and I was going to die. They found it was worse than what they had seen in the scan. Much worse. It was an emergency operation. But I was like, I don't want. I didn't come here to be operated. Until I was told, I'm going. He called me. He told me he would call two people. My apostle and my father. My uncle. He said, I'm going to call them. Let them speak some sense into you. I told him, don't involve, please. Let's not take it too far. <laughs> Simple jokes among friends. <laughs> I was just saying, I'm thinking about it. I think he actually reported me anyway, because Apostle gave me an instruction and said, do it. So there are things you cannot carry until the vessel changes. You just can't. You just cannot carry them until the vessel changes. Let me show you scripture and as you pray for me. Because for me, the clock is always against me. Somehow, somehow. Let's start with 2 Timothy chapter 2. From verse 20 to 21. I know many of us know 2 Timothy chapter 2 for only verse 1 and 2, 3. Eh? The things you have heard. Don't you? This is the context. Paul is telling Timothy about making disciples, you know, taking territory. This is the context. Are we together? Read with me. But in a great... Eh? You're not reading. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Go to the next verse. Man, I get pray for the media team today. They are moving faster than I remember. What a joke. They are far. There is, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for what? Uh huh. Sanctified and useful for the master, comma, prepared. There are different kinds of vessels in a great house. We are in a great house of worship harvest. It's a great house. Now, do you realize that he says that if anyone cleanses himself, in other words, it's up to you what vessel you become. It's not up to God. It's available. I told you there are those of gold, silver, clay, wood. You can choose. You can choose which vessel you want to become. But there is a process of... Pre Go to the next verse 21. There is a process of preparation. Wow, my media team today... Wow. I really need you to move faster because I move quickly. My mind moves quickly. So, for honor that the, he will be. He will be, it be. He will be. That sounds to me like it can be. It's a possibility. It's not he is. It's not that you're predetermined to be something. You can become. Follow me and I'll make you become. There is a process of vessel change. The vessel that you are has brought you to this point. For you to go to the next level, you must become another vessel altogether. And you can actually change and become a different vessel. That's what the scripture is telling you. That you can become a vessel. He will be a vessel for honor. He will be the one who makes certain choices. Will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work prepared for every good work there is a process of preparation between you knowing what your ministry is some of us think as long as i've had the lord it will be no the vessel must change jesus had to subject himself to the ministry of another man and to god and he went through certain processes that changed his vessel to be able to be the kind of vessel that would fulfill the assignment that he had on the earth you must, and all of us must constantly be becoming a different vessel to carry the next level of assignment. And I think that's one of the reasons why, like Bishop Doug talks about it in, in his book, The Mega Church. When he talks about chapter five steps to the anointing, it's the first thing he says. That many people never fulfill their, their mission on earth because they're not willing to change. 
we are unwilling. We're like, for us in our family, we're like this. For me, these were my plans. I have a five-year plan. You can't interrupt it. It does not include leading a mission or community. It does not include serving on a team. It does not include, I am unwilling. Me, I determine. I'm not feeling it. God hasn't spoken to me. And so we become limited. And sometimes it is little success that deceives us. That compared to your entire family, you're ahead. But you don't have an idea what you could be. You have two plots of land and you're like, that's it. Two plots. No one in our family has ever had a plot. I have two. I can die. Meanwhile, eh, the thing God has for you. But you have... Now, today I kept hearing something about business people. Business people, I feel like God is calling you to submit yourselves to another. To a shepherd. And your shepherd may not be a business leader. But God will give him the keys. Because John the Baptist was not the savior. So Jesus was not learning how to be a savior from John the Baptist. He walked in no miracles. But Jesus had to subject himself to... It takes humility to have a vessel change. It takes humility to change vessel. You, you have to become spiritual, not to look at what the man has in the natural, but understand that there is a position. God, it's like saying you, you have your parent, you have to, you can't listen to them because they were never in school, so you don't listen to them. But God puts the power in your parents to take you to places they've never been. That's the wisdom of God because it requires us to humble ourselves and understand that God has chosen a process through which the vessel must change. We don't predetermine that. So when he says a vessel of honor is sanctified, useful for the master, pre that big word prepared. To prepare, I saw in the dictionary, make, means to make someone ready for use. To make someone ready for use or able to deal with something. Some Make someone ready or able to do or deal with something. You may desire it, but are you ready or able to deal with it? There are certain levels of success that you desire that if you walked in right now, they would destroy you because you're not ready. And God uses another person to make you ready. You don't prepare yourself. Food doesn't prepare itself. Someone has to go who is not food, collect it, put it together for it to be eaten. eaten. For something to be used, even like this room, it doesn't prepare itself. Another has to come and prepare it. The word prepare has to do with something from outside you, making you ready. Are we together? Hey, hey. The ground is prepared for seed to be planted. You can see that it is different. It is separated. Those who are prepared are separated. They are different. They are not like normal people. You can see the difference. Can people see the difference in your life? Since you, you placed yourself under the authority of another. Do you know, you know can, there's got to be a difference. For yeah, Apostle, we see the difference. Yeah. We want you to know we see it. Yeah. We feed it. Even as it is coming to us. When you place yourself under another, there is a difference. But many of us, we are so stuck in our minds on a certain plan we had in senior five. It's a grand plan that when God invites us into something through our shepherd, we think that they are disorganizing our lives because we've never seen it. Of course, you've never seen it because there are heights you've not reached. It takes a certain spiritual height for someone to see. I know you're understanding me. Yeah, a bride is prepared. A home is prepared. Vessels are prepared before use. How many of you here use a dirty cup for when you get home, you look for the dirty cup? Why don't you use it? It's not prepared for use. So does it clean itself? Do you tell it cup? Why are you dirty? No. It takes another to clean the cup for it to be used. There are things you've struggled with because it's your private life. You're not willing to expose the dirty cup to another to clean it. You are the cup. You want to clean yourself. I tell you, this wasn't even the message. You see, when you subject yourself,
yourself to another, you open your life up to them. How will they lead you when you're hidden? How can you guide a hidden sheep? That's a word for someone. Business people, you overcame up in my preparation. Submit to God and to another for the vessel to change. And I'm going to show you the scriptures. But I want you to understand that you're a vessel. Say, I am a vessel. And you know what? God wants you to become a vessel of honor. To become. It's a process. And it never ends. You never arrive and say, I have now become. Just when you think you've entered a level, God says, there's more. There's more. There's more. There's always more in God. But every time he wants to take you to the next level, he requires you to change. To change your thinking. To change your operation. To change how you behave. A king who behaves like a child is a danger to the kingdom. But there's a place where you need to be a child. That king at home is a child before his father. But there's behavior that is fit for a king. But again, it takes another to teach us that behavior. Because there's someone who God has allowed to see how kings behave. That then invites you into the place of kings. You know, God, this year, Apostle has prophesied that it's our year of rising. You see, to rise, let me not go ahead of myself. We're going pola and pola. Yeah, we're going pola and pola. Vessels are prepared, you guys, to be used. There is a process of preparation and it's not comfortable. I don't think that cups feel good if they had feelings. When someone is scrubbing them, putting soap, maybe their eyes are crying. There's soap inside them. Then they put hot water sometimes if they are masavu inside. The cup is there burn burning, but it has to be used. You have to be useful for the master. To be useful for the master, you must be prepared as a vessel for honor. And the process of preparation. If you've ever prepared for guests, you know the process. It's hard. You buy this, you buy the other, you clean, you what, you spray, you dust, you get recipes, you hire chefs, you... It's a whole... It's laborious. Hey, the process of preparation. You can't just be there and being prepared. How? In my bed sleeping. Huh? Preparation has discomfort in it. But why am I over talking to you? Let me show you some scriptures. And before I do, I want you to know that preparation is a process. It's a detailed process. It is a process of separation. Someone say separation. Every fruitful person goes through a process of preparation or separation. Every one of them. Special things are separate and different. So as you hear vessel change, as you hear preparation, I want you to hear separation. There are things that, the washed things are separated from the dirty ones. The stuff you use for guests are separated from the usual stuff you use at home. I hope so. If you don't have them separate, you've not yet hosted a certain level of people. Um, that's the truth. Mm. There are certain people when you host them, you can't use certain things. So, let me first read for you something from Bishop Doug's book. Do you want to hear it? Are you listening? He says, if you desire, someone said desire. desire. How many of you desire for God to use you in your generation? In whichever way, all of us, great. So if you desire a particular anointing, God will mold you into the type of vessel that can contain that anointing. If God wants you to be a great pastor, he may work on your education. Someone say fire. fire. That's the thing. You may not be thinking that God is talking about education. Me, I will never finish university. And then you're limited. You'll never be a great pastor. To re Listen. He may work on your knowledge of administration and law. Say what a shock. <laughs> to receive the anointing, you must allow him to work on you. Allow. Some people are not educated, nor do they educate themselves by reading, yet they desire the anointing to be leaders of large numbers of people. Don't you know that pastoring a large number of people means that you will have several highly educated people in your congregation? How will you relate with all of those people when you stopped at? I will not mention it. God, so when your shepherd comes and says, finish that degree, 
even though you are 45, start undergrad, adult education. Some of you here, I'm telling you, that is your word. Go and finish that degree. Stop it. There are processes you cannot just... Preparation, you can't say now. Let's rinse the cup before washing it. And then they find porridge is still stuck inside. Then it can't be useful to the master. You can't skip the process because you think you're very spiritual. I tell today I told Jesus I'm going to be nice. Is it working? Okay, Apostle, why are you laughing like that? <laughs> I'm nice. God may be working on your language. Are you listening? God may be working on your language. He may try to police policy. You people, it's not easy. I'm still a work in progress. Rukunjiri is not near. And he's policing it one more apostle. He may try to polish your manners and general etiquette. Can you imagine that your etiquette can stop you from getting into certain places? I know today you only want us to talk about the high places of the spirit and how to ascend. But you can real fail. You can ascend in prayer and stay limited because of your etiquette. Opening your mouth while eating. And they can't invite you in certain places just because of how you eat. And so when your disciple starts to tell you, Mukwano, close the mouth. Don't say, eh, I'm 57. You will think I arrived here by telling me how to eat. No, actually you arrived there because of like, how you are right now. Etiquette. He is his bishop, Doug. It's not me. Ah, a man of God. He may send you to a Bible school for training. And all the network leaders and other pastors say Amen. amen. <laughs> he may send you off to a secular university for molding. I've had seven years of university training. That's Bishop Doug. Those years molded me into a suitable vessel. God may take you through various humbling experiences. All he is doing is preparing a vessel that can handle the anointing. Pastors, some of you, the church is where it is because God is taking you through training. Humbling you. Teaching you to go where he tells you to go and lead with all your heart even when the church is small. To give it everything. So that when the big thing comes, it doesn't get to your head. All he is doing is preparing a vessel that can handle the anointing. This is the principle of vessel change. If you desire a strong prophetic anointing, God is likely to require you of a life of solitude. You cannot have such an anointing if you don't make time to wait on the Lord. You see, many changes may have to take place in your character, in your moral life, if God is to use you for great achievements. Listen to this. Those who refuse to change and to modify are refusing to be recipients of the anointing. The first step alone can explain why many people desire the anointing but never get it. Nobody pours Coca-Cola into a fuel tank. If you are a fuel tank, you will never receive Coca-Cola. You will receive fuel. There are different containers for different anointings. Please accept this simple reality. Those who refuse to change and modify are refusing to be recipients of the anointing. But for us here, we want to receive the anointing. You see, the anointing changes everything. Your business, your marriage, your ministry, your life, everything. You cannot do ministry without the anointing. And all of us have been called to be ministers. All of us. All of us have been called to multiply the kingdom of God. To make disciples of the nations. How will you do that without the anointing? But it requires a change of vessel. Now let me show you different scriptures. Let's start with Jesus. Where Papa Blesso stopped. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Read with me. Then Jesus was led up. Someone say up. Jesus was led up by the spirit into what? Ah, to be tempted by the devil. What? I'm sorry, what? First stop. What, have, you, have, you, have you read that scripture? First of all, that where Jesus was led was a high place. I don't think that it meant that the wilderness was on a mountain. No. 
We're going to see other scriptures proving that it wasn't about the uh, geographical altitude. That he was led up, moreover by the spirit, into a wilderness to be tempted. Do you know that being separate, some of you are going through that process right now, where you're being separated from some company, being separated from some habits, being separated from some cultures, because uh, uh, the, the, being invited into separation is being invited to elevation. Yes, se separation equals elevation. You cannot go to the next level without being separated. There are things that must fall off. There are things that must fall off. They must go for God to take you. There are weights that must go for you to run faster. Are we together? Is your neighbor alive? Jesus was led up into the wilderness alone. Up. The wilderness is a high place. Up. The wilderness is a high place. There are things that God starts to speak to you that no one else can understand for a while. Like how apostle has been church planting, church planting. I'm telling you, few of us were understanding it. I'm sure it was a bit of a wilderness for him. Because it was a high place. And we have to be able to follow to go to that high place. But now also another thing here that I see. Tests are going to come. Tests are an invitation to elevation. For the vessel to change, there must be tests. Exams. For you to go to the next class, you had to pass exams. Honestly, guys, not so. That's how they would know that you're ready for the next level. So even in terms of vessel change, there are tests. If you refuse to sit the exam, you stay in the class that you are at and you're stuck there. And that's how some of us never finished university. You had two retakes, which you never did. And that made you fail three whole years you had put in. There are tests that must be passed, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is not the message maybe you had wanted me to teach. You want me to only talk about we are going higher. But it's a good message. We can't go higher without the vessel changes. The vessel has to change. And it changes through the things Papa Blesso said. You submit yourself to another. It's a test to be asked to come at 6 a.m. every Sunday to serve. 6 a.m. to serve. Many of you are like, ah, that's my sleeping day. It's okay. You will keep failing that test. Then one day when you're 57 and you wake up to pass it, you can go to P2. <laughs> when you become a location pastor, the time completely changes to like 4 a.m. So how will you go to 4 a.m. when you can't do 6 if you've not passed the test of saving 20% of your income, but you're claiming I'm a billionaire, even if you change your name to extreme billionaire, you will stay at the level of those who don't save. Because how will God call you to investment when you cannot do 20% savings? I, I'm saying very practical things. I'm so sorry. I know you want me to talk about just vessel change up there. No, I want you to think about it. If I cannot wake up to pray at 5 a.m., how will God call me to deeper things? And you can't jump the process, guys. Of, there is a process of preparation for the vessel to be used for the master's work. God, you, cannot, you can't bribe God. And say, now God, let's, let's reduce the time. Let's negotiate. That process, I really don't want to go through this one. Take me to the next level. That is cheating. Those are the people who get investigated when they cheat exams. Okay. The amends have really reduced. But I have my people here, so okay, I'll look here and be encouraged. Let me show you more things about Jesus. Well, Oma, we are, verse, we are ready. Verse 5 and 6. Are you still with me? Yeah. Then the devil took him where? Yeah. Took him where? Yeah. Took him where? Yeah. Are you seeing how testing is an invitation to hire? He already went up to be tested. Then the devil took him even up. In up there are levels. Every test bring when you pass it takes you to the next level. Every test you pass takes you to the next level. The test of tithe, the test of fast fruit, the test of prayer, the test of all of them are tests. And every test of generosity, the test of honor, the test of all of those are tests. Now, every test you've not passed, you have missed your promotion. You must keep 
Some of you, you've gone through the same test every year. It's time to pass it. Determine that you have to pass the test so that we go to the next class. You can't be a for you. You've been in P7 for seven years. At least go to the tertiary institution. Because your friends now finished senior six there at university, you're still in P7. Look around. The people who you used to hang out with, are you still at the same level? Some of us, they left us behind. But do you know why? They agreed to pass certain tests. And to pass a test, you're prepared. Hey, wow, you people, you're scaring me. The devil took him up into the holy city. It wasn't a physical city, as you can imagine. Jesus was not moving around with the devil flying over cities. This was in his mind. The, the, the heavens, those are the heavens that the apostle talks about. That it was in his mind. Jesus started to see himself on top of the, of the city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, verse 6. And then, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. The devil was testing Jesus, trying to give him a way out of his assignment. Yeah, for some of us, it's, uh, you live with the guy so that you are assured that he will marry you. It's been six years. You have three children. He's not marrying you. Yeah. Eh? He gives you scriptures to support it. They're living together. Yes. He gives you scriptures to support it. Or you get someone on the side. Shortcut. It's hot in here. Eh? I'm feeling it. But you people, am I saying bad things? Ah, you're looking at me badly. Eh? The things are in the scripture. Let me show you the third test of Jesus. Matthew 4, 8 to 9. Together. Again, the devil took him where? Guys, are you seeing that for every test there's an elevation? Are you seeing it? That there's a level that tithe takes you to, but there's a level that fast fruit takes you to, and there's a level that honor takes you to, and there's a level that sacrificial giving takes you to. Are you with me? There's a level that being a regular church attender takes you to where you are regular, you are faithful. There is a level that leading a missional community takes you to when you start making disciples. There is a level that going out on evangelism takes you to. There is a level that being a zonal pastor takes you to responsibility. There is a level that being a location pastor takes you to on and on. But in every stage there is a test. There are things you must let go of. There are things you must embrace. There are ways you must behave because God wants to elevate us. God is not trying to take things away from us. He's elevating us. He wants us to fly, but to fly the weights have to be few. So there are things God must cut off of our lives. Hey, this is a good message. <laughs> Testing is an invitation into a higher dimension of operation. It's an invitation. So pass the test. Help me tell your neighbor, pass the tests. All of us are going through various tests. I'm telling you, even tomorrow is a test. Some of you are planning not to go to garage tomorrow. It's a test. I was asking some people that, do you think for us who are pastors, we are made of what? Do we have a day off? Do you get to choose as a pastor or a worship team leader when you're feeling like going to church? But let me tell you, there is God is not unjust. We cannot operate at the same level. It's not possible. They are tests. They are tests, but we are going to pass those tests. That's why God has sent us this message. We are going to pass those tests. We are going to rise. I see you rising. I see you going to the next level of operation. I see you ascending in the spirit. I see you passing those tests in the name of Jesus. Hey, hey, sit down and I finish. God told Abraham, leave your family. Leave your people. Leave your country. Abraham had to pass a test. God asked David to serve a man who had the office that God would promote him to. He was anointed, but for about 13 years, David was even was serving another man and running away from him. Some of us, because you had an encounter with God, you think you can't serve. You're too dope to serve. But that's why you can't walk in your assignment. You see, serving is the pathway to elevation. Not encounter. Encounter is not your pathway to elevation. It's serving. It's subjecting yourself to another. Doing what they say. <laughs> I remember when Apostle called us to take on both times the assignment at downtown. Katikati, it was completely, we were tricked. He knows it, I know it. 
but we, like, we are happy we were tricked. But the second time, he called us in the morning before the service for breakfast. Before the service, 7 a.m., I need to see you. Then told us in like 20 minutes, I found a place downtown. We had been pastors for eight years where we were, were very comfortable. Uh, now, I was thinking of, who do you think can take it up? We started to tell him. He said, actually, I think it's you. Then he said, how much time do you need? We said, maybe six months. He laughed. He said, he said what? Then we were like, maybe three months. He laughed. Okay, Apostle, how much time? He said, two weeks. We said, okay. And I'm so glad that, he, that we were willing to say yes. We didn't know how it was going to work out. Then we went to downtown. Then we were excited. Then he called us one day like this. I want to see you 15 minutes. We went to his office. I'm thinking of some changes. If you left downtown, who would lead? We looked at each other. We, we said in the name, Pastor Fiona. You're very sure? Yes. How much time would you need? Well, like Apostle, you know we are available. How much time do you think we will need? He said, um, I want you to go to Gayaza. You have a month. <laughs> okay. The heart is beating. The palms are sweating. You are confused. Okay, sure. In the meeting, you look okay. Then you walk out. You don't talk to each other about it. The two of you. Just keep quiet. No talking. Everyone talk to Jesus. Then you meet the, the people and you tell them the Lord has spoken. We have, you are the downtowners. We put on the vision board. We told them Jesus has spoken. So next time for the next level inside, <laughs> Jesus, help me. What are we going to do? You say yes, then you figure it out. But each time God has elevated us through just saying yes, yes, yes. And it has required us to change. I tell you, leading where there is a building is very different. There is a difference. Sit down, sit down. John, ah, 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 Apostle. <laughs> sit down, you guys. You guys, look at that time. <laughs> Lord, mercy on me. John the Baptist was given a clear message and assignment and restrictions on food and clothing. Some of you, you have your restrictions because of your assignment, but you're trying to be like the other people who walk around showing their private areas. And it is in fashion to show breasts, thighs, and other such matters. Even bums sometimes. In hot pants, if you see some girls passing down, you can see the bum peeping like this. I'm telling you. And for you, you think that you're suffering because they tell you, if you're on the worship team, wear a shirt which covers. You're like, nah, nah, God gave us figures for what? You cannot buy your figure in the mirror at home or before your husband. There are restrictions that come with vessel change. There are things you can no longer wear. There are drinks you can no longer drink. There are places you can no longer hang out if you want to go to the next level. Until we are being practical. There are phone calls you can no longer take. There are phone calls you can no longer make. There are people you can no longer text in the middle of the night. Because even if your pastor can't see God who promotes sees. There are WhatsApp groups you can no longer be on. There are movies you can no longer watch. I beg, eh? There are apps you must delete. There are people you can no longer follow on social media and like their posts. Some of you, I get confused. I see the posts you like. And I'm like, was it by accident? Every day accident, every day accident. Your children are always playing on the phone. Liking that particular person's posts. Guys, there are restrictions for greatness. And God doesn't cut off those things to reduce you. It's because he must take you higher. In the beginning, it looks like you're the flop. Give it time. Oh, give it time. The ones who you thought were ahead of you will be coming to you to ask. But you must be willing to change. To be prepared to become a vessel for honorable use. There are places you can no longer hang out at certain hours. You know yourselves. There are people you must block today, right now as I'm speaking. Block. Co block permanently. When they call you, you don't pick. Yes. 
Because there is a generation. There is an assignment over your life. There is a generation waiting. Waiting for you to rise, child of God. Waiting for you to take your place. But you can't do that while holding on to the stuff that the world is handing out. Abraham had to give up something. David had to give up something. Jesus had to give up something. John had to give up something. Oh. He says to Samuel, <laughs> I'm going to close, I think, here. Yeah. He said to Samuel, in 1 Samuel 10, 6 to 7, New Living Translation, there's a particular statement I want you to see. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you and you will prophesy with them. What does that last verse, part of the verse say? You will be changed into a different person. And after you've been changed into a different person, what will happen? After these signs take place, when you change into a different person, do what must be done for God is with you. God is with those who are willing to change into another person. It's time to let go of certain company. It's time to let go of certain things in your life. It's time to step into the things God has said that you should step into because it is time to step into your assignment. When God will give you another assignment, he will invite you to become another man or woman. It's an invitation. You can say yes or no. He will still love you. He will still go to heaven. But you'll get to heaven and see what could have been. And they will wipe the tears from your eyes. And that will not be your story. You are going to pass the tests. You're going to subject yourself to be told to change into another man. Dear business person, start tithing. Start giving fast fruit. Start serving in the ministry. It's not a demotion. <laughs> it's an elevation. It's an invitation to be a different kind of businessman. Who prays in tongues? Who disciples others? Children of God, are you willing to live differently? Are you willing to give differently? Are you willing to treat your spouse differently? Are you willing to change your reputation and be found in God's house? Are you willing to stop living as though you're married when you're not? Are you willing to stop having sex with that person you're not married to? Are you willing to start serving? Are you willing to start paying your workers on time? Are you willing to start paying your taxes? Are you willing to change the vessel? Are you willing to change the vessel? Now listen to me, spiritual instructions always seem very off. The instructions that they come and give us here. Go give your wife Kameza. Go submit yourself to your husband. Many of us, you don't do those things, but you want a good marriage. You pray about it, you fast for it, but you refuse to do the instructions. You have to change into another man and say, I'm now the man who gives Kameza. I'm now the wife who speaks well of my husband and does the other things which wives are supposed to do. Who is available for intimacy with my husband? You can't say for me, uh -uh, I'm not interested in those things. To step into the next level, receive instruction and don't wait for your feelings. Many of us, what I'm hearing is the feelings are stopping us. You're not feeling it. You can't feel your way into greatness. Are you willing to be humble like a child? To be open to learn new things? Even when they are difficult. God is calling us to something different because there are things you cannot carry until the vessel changes. This is the last verse we are reading and then we are going to pray. John 12, 23 to 26. Read with me. But Jesus answered them saying, Worship harvest, the hour has come that the Son of Man, that this church should be glorified. The hour has come. And then he says, most assuredly, it's almost like saying, I swear, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and does what? It remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. God is calling us to allow for a death, for a glory to come. It feels like you're dying by letting go of that extra girlfriend. It feels like you're dying by dressing better. It feels like you're dying by giving your tithe. It feels like you're dying by choosing to serve on a team. It feels like you're dying just showing up consistently for garage. It feels like you're dying to say yes to plant a church. It feels like you're dying, but you see, that's right. There must be a death before glory. God wants to trust us with amazing things, but the vessel must change. 
and only you can allow the vessel to change. I can't make your vessel change. I'm in charge of my vessel. You're in charge of your vessel. To the extent that I'm willing to open this vessel up to another who God has placed over me to change into another man, I will change. God wants you to buy land, to build. To, but that means there are things that you understand. I know that your spirit man has understood. In every area, there must be a vessel change. It is private. It is personal. It's different for all of us, but it is necessary for promotion. And you know what? I see us changing. I see us rising. I see us being used for much honor in the house of the Lord. Because there are things that we cannot carry until the vessel changes. Amen. Why don't you lift your voice and just start talking to God. Present him those areas that have been difficult for changing. Present to him those areas. And even as we do that... I'm going to tell, talk to someone here right now. The vessel must change. Pray. Don't, don't, don't worry about me. Just keep talking to Jesus. If you're here and you've never met Jesus, Lord of your life, the vessel must change. God is interested in your life. He wants to take you to the next level. If that is you and you've never met Jesus, Lord of your life, or you walked with him before and you walked away, I want you to put your hand up. You say, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am willing to begin a life with Jesus. I am willing to walk with him for the rest of my life. I'm willing to submit myself to him. Even though your heart is pumping fast, just put your hand up. And join this company of people who are willing to walk with God. Are you there? If you've never met Jesus, Lord of your life, you're watching in the room, you're online. I just want you to put your hand up wherever you are. And I want to pray with you right there right there where you are that putting up of your hand is a sign of separating yourself identifying with god and saying today i'm willing to walk the rest of my life with jesus if you're there online or at any of our locations just go ahead and pray this simple prayer after me say lord jesus today i receive you as my lord and savior I submit myself to you completely. My mind is yours. My body is yours. My spirit is yours. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you're online, welcome to the family of God. There's a number on your screen. Please send us a message on that number and let us know that you made the decision to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Masikerebo. I want you to lean in a little bit more. Come on. God has been speaking very specifically. Very specifically to all of us here today. And there are particular people. You see, it's very personal, this thing. Jesus was led into the wilderness alone, not with his father and mother, not with his brothers, not with his disciples alone. Everyone, we know what it is that God is calling us to. Now I'm going to make an invitation. And, and this is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. But there are particular people today. As I was teaching, you know that God was speaking to you about vessel change in specific terms it was loud it was clear your heart you know in your heart you know you know you know that it's you forget about your neighbor they have nothing to do with this i want you to run to the front right now just come if that is you vessel change specific things that god wants to shift to change for you to let go of things you that it's very specific it's not everybody it's very very specific just walk, walk. walking forward is your act of obedience let's fill the place into the sides into the sides all the way all the way keep moving into the sides keep moving into the sides let's fill it up fill it up this is you and jesus i'm not the one calling you it is the lord just go ahead right now continue to talk to jesus continue to pray maribo sitaya bababa rende kesetelebose Amanda Kalebo Sitaya Baba Baba. Oh, yes, as you're walking, something is shifting. As you're making that walk, something is changing. Manda Bodi Baraba Shele Kesete. Mandelebo Zitara Mandebo. We must change into another man. We are changing into another man. We are changing into another man. Maribo Roba Zitaya Baba Baba. 
Come on, church. Pray loudly, pray fervently. Something is shifting. Jesus prayed and the heavens were open. Don't pray in a dignified manner. Surrender to God in this moment. Open your mouth and start telling, Lord, I give you this thing. Whatever it is. Maybe it's an issue that you've carried. Maybe it is a habit that you've carried. Maybe it is a just a difficulty. Your heart has been hardened to the things of God. Maybe it's whatever it is. It's not by power. It's not by might. It is by the Spirit of God. As you walk forward, as you make this obedience, the Lord is changing something. The Lord is shifting something. Now, I want you to forget about the people around you. Close your eyes if you must. And lean in. God is going to speak to you very specifically right now. Some of you need to say yes today. You need to say yes. Yes to Jesus. To that thing he's telling you to let go of. Before I pray with you, I told you earlier that spiritual instructions can be very strange. Like when in the book of James, the Holy Spirit says that if you are sick, you call the elders, they put oil on you, they lay their hands, you confess sin, and then you're healed. It doesn't sound like that's how people get healed. But when you obey that thing, it works. Spiritual things are strange. The instruction I feel in my heart is one that we give often here, and it might be one of those that your ear has become hardened to. So don't allow if you walked forward and you know that there's a specific area God wants you to change or to obey in, I want you to send a message to your location pastor or your immediate disciple. Tell them the exact thing and they don't be ashamed. Oh, Baba Nage, now they will know that I've been having an affair. Look, it doesn't matter. That, that shame, that feeling of you want to hide is what keeps you bound. It's in exposing it that it loses its power so send them a message don't say i'll talk to them no the instruction is send them a message tell them this is the thing and this is the instruction some of you they will give you an instruction of what to do because you don't know what you should do but god is going to tell your disciple what you should do and then when they tell you to do it just do it don't say ah, ah, ah that one i'm not able that's what i hear in the spirit remember spiritual instructions seem strange they don't seem very spiritual sometimes. So right after here, as we are praying, you get your phone, send it now. Not, not after the evening now. Send them a WhatsApp, tell them, this is my name. This is the issue. This is what God has told me. Oh, I don't yet have instruction and I'm open to instruction. And then whatever it is, just like that, in your obedience, it's going to fall off. Amen. And God is going to change the vessel. Amen. Now lift up your hands. As high as you can. As high as you can. Open yourself up to the Lord. Father, I thank you for the entrance of your word brings light. Oh, it brings freedom. It brings understanding. Jesus, you tested vessel change for us. No vessel changed like you did. You who helped David. You who helped Samuel. You who helped Abraham. You who helped everyone lord who is who has worked great things in your kingdom you're here with us through your spirit and we surrender and open ourselves to you completely lord today we say everything in our lives is available to you for changing direction everything our money our lives our sexuality our minds everything our homes everything is available. our gifts and abilities our time we are available lord change the things that have been difficult to change because today we say we are willing to be vessels of honor in jesus name amen, amen. why don't you clap your hands to jesus amen something specific that i had as as she was praying is in the area of obedience to another obedience to another for some of you it may be just obedience to God God has spoken to you you know it in your heart you're supposed to do this thing but you struggled with it but 
my sense is there are people who are your specific struggle is being told by another person to do something yes, yes, yes. and that irritates you it annoys you and you have failed to to move and God wants to heal you from that Amen. because that's essentially what she's teaching it's not just general obedience it's subjecting yourself to another person to tell you okay maybe don't do that and then you guide and you do not do it amen so if that's your word i want you to take it seriously because it's the only thing standing between you and where yes. god wants you to yes. go yes. obedience to another yes. person yes. yeah there is obedience to god that one we all call to, to be obedient to god but someone here your specific struggle is obedience to a person okay so God wants to heal you from that. Why don't you just pray? Just keep praying in the spirit. Just keep praying in the spirit. The people in the house, let's pray. Let's pray. We came from there. We pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're delivering us from disobedience. You're delivering us from the dangers of having no head over us. Thank you, Lord, for your power to change us, to shift us. It is you who works in us both to will yes. and to do yes. according to your good pleasure. So right now, we subject ourselves to you. We commit ourselves to you that you will work on us inside out. That our obedience will become delightful. That will not be those who obey grudgingly. But will be delightful people who obey delightfully and follow instruction. Yes, Lord. So we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.